Well, good morning and welcome to Cincy Lifestyle. It is Monday and Clyde, it feels like a Monday. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, uh, Mona, <laughs> it does. <laughs> I woke up this morning not entirely happy that it was morning. Hope you're having a good day. <laughs> Thank you. I am having a pretty good day so far. You know, I did one of the worst things that I can do in the morning and that's drinking my, making my tea. I burnt the tea bag, just split open and then all the junk from inside was all in my tea and I can't stand it. And so, yeah, it's a Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yep. See, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Mona, uh, do you, uh, I know that uh, you probably love certain things that might be called comfort foods, right? You got a favorite? Oh, right yeah, quick? absolutely. Yes, I love potato chips or comfort food for me 24 seven. OK, all right. So apparently we all do. And we uh, got a breakdown by state. Uh, through uh, 2020 as to what people tend to, tended to like. That was based on stuff that they looked up in Google, that sort of thing. For Ohio, guess, guess what ours was? Macaroni and cheese. Nope, chili. Ohio's comfort food oh, really? apparently is chili by Google survey. Uh, Kentucky was chicken and dumplings. Uh, and Indiana was mm, 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 biscuits and gravy. Biscuits and gravy. <laughs> Now, what would you guess overall was the most popular comfort food? Macaroni and cheese. That would I'm just be sticking with macaroni and cheese, right? Well, you're half right. It was grilled cheese. Okay. Can you imagine that? Well, grilled oh, cheese. Yes. Grilled cheese. I love grilled cheese. Oh, oh, Clyde. Uh-oh. I was driving down. Yeah, I was driving down Montgomery Road past the Frisches in Norwood. They had a sign uh, on their big sign. It said, Grippo's Barbecue Chips Grilled Cheese. Now... I'm like, no way. This is like two of my favorite foods put together like that. That is something I'm going to have to try. Oh, I thought you were going to say you swerved across three lanes of traffic to get there right then. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mona, we're going to switch now from comfort to discomfort. Have you ever searched your closet looking for that favorite shirt but didn't find it? Okay, what about rummaging through your spice cabinet for the ever elusive nutmeg you only use twice a year? Well, we could be, uh, well, you could be uh, in the need of organizing your space, and we know just the person who can help you do that. Cindy Thomas is the owner of Simply Organized Interior. She's with us now. Cindy, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Clyde. So, okay, so how did the how, how did the light bulb come on that said, this is the business I want to do? Well, you remember last spring when we were all on that lockdown order with uh, COVID-19, I just had to start looking more inward into my own home. I needed to look for some positivity. So I just started, you know, finding areas of space mismanagement and clutter and different things like that in my home. And I just decided to start organizing. And then I ended up sharing a lot of my projects with my neighbors and some of my mm -hmm. friends and family. Mm -hmm. And they ended up telling me like, hey, you're really good at this. So with a lot of encouragement, Simply Organized Interiors was born. Okay, that's super. Now you and I talked about the kitchen, particularly mine, which can be a real problem area for most folks in terms of organization. Got some tips there? Yeah, so one of the biggest things I would have people focus on is food storage. So you want to go through all your food. You want to toss out anything that's expired. Um, and you want to for sure get rid of things that are, you know, that you don't use anymore so that you can donate them um, to the food pantry, try to be a blessing to somebody else. Now, the other thing I would focus on is probably like your utensil gadget drawer. You want to start editing, editing out duplicate things, apple slicers, anything like that. And then any gadgets that you're not using on a regular, because I know we're all guilty of having things that we bought for single use, like your avocado mm -hmm. slicer, or mm -hmm. your kale ripper. So you want to get rid of those things and <laughs> focus on the things that you actually are using. <laughs> okay. Well, on the subject of gadgets or tools uh, that we might have, uh, what would you suggest that might help for a room? Well, I mean, I think the one thing that really helps um, in any room could be a basket. Um, it really depends on the room and the function of the basket, but baskets are a great way to actually contain those loose items um, mm -hmm. that are alike. Mm -hmm. You want to put alike things. So like a towel in your, towels in your bathroom, you can put throw blankets in your living room, maybe your paper goods, 
um, that you want to put in a basket or maybe even your seasonal items like your sweaters in your closet. So baskets are a good way to start when you're trying to contain okay. um, your space. Okay, all right. I know you've got a lot more advice for folks. We're about out of time, but I do want to give people the opportunity to connect to your wisdom. How do they do that? Well, you can um, find us online at uh, simplyorganizedinteriors.com or you can visit us on Instagram at simply underscore organize underscore interiors or email us at hello simply organize interiors at, at gmail.com. All right, Cindy, that's great. First of all, personally, thank you for the advice you gave me. When I get home today, I'm going to put that <laughs> into practice. And thank you for talking to us today. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yes, ma'am. Mona? Well, with all the current challenges, our next guest says it's more important than ever to jumpstart your health and nutrition this year. And to help us out, we're going to talk to the undefeated coach on the network show, The Biggest Loser. And as the best-selling author of Diet Right for Your Personality Type. Hey, I did not know about that. And I want to welcome fitness expert Jen Wiederstrom. Thank you so much, Jen, for joining us today. Let's get right to it. Um, what are some of the attainable lifestyle changes and stress on attainable that people can make to their routine? It could be get outside to walk, don't forget to call mom, right? You know, you know, the other work things I've got to do. And also I start with putting something really powerful in my body. I always do um, Palm Wonderful 100% pomegranate juice because, I mean, it truly is the antioxidant superpower. So. And for me, with the three free radicals out there kind of over time breaking down and damaging my body, uh, it's there to protect me. And so by that little, and then all it takes less than five minutes of my day, right, to be set, to be ready, it, it sets the tone for the entire day ahead. All right. So, um, Jen, tell us, what should people be thinking about when they are setting their health and nutrition goals? I, I think that they have to look at what's most important to them. You know, sometimes I think people get caught up looking on, well, what's this person doing? Well, what's this person doing? Well, what are you doing? What's important to you? What is a, what is, are, are you wanting to get more energy? Are you looking to reconnect to movement or you know, are you, have you had a child? You're just trying to get some strength back. Pay attention to what's important to you in your life. And when you make that part of your front row, it's easier to stay on top of the progress and the, and the, and the process that you have around it. And do the, does, does this change or things different with the stay at home order? I, listen, I, I, I have taken advantage of it. Everyone that I've worked with, I say, look, like, look at what you're in the position that like you're home more. You have uh, the opportunity to know truly what's in what you're eating. Cause you're not eating out as much. And, and look at, I always encourage them to look at as far as nutritionally speaking, Look at what's in what you're eating. You know, is there added sugar, preservatives, fillers, like none of which are in palm juice. And that's what I want people to start to see that that small action, that small, those choices around what's in those products makes a big difference. And then you can take that and put it into smoothies. Like this is, this is our purple haze smoothie over at Palm. And, and, and that energizes you for the day. It, it, it's full of the antioxidant goodness. And that, that, that's, that's where I want people to start. It can be that All simple. Right. Yes, yes, those added sugars are diet killers. That's right. So where can people go for more information, Jen? Mm -hmm. Yes, I would love to send people to palmwonderful.com. There's great other great recipes there if you're out of ideas and, you know, it's all brought to you by really great people. Okay, Jen, thanks so much for talking to us today. Appreciate it. Clyde. You're so welcome. Mona, the beginning of a new year marks a perfect opportunity to refresh and boost confidence. So how about starting where many of us likely slacked last year? Becca Lawson talks about putting focus on hair care. There's no doubt health has been top of mind, but what about your hair? That may be a great way to get back to feeling like yourself in 2021. At Great Cliffs, we've rolled out the Great Care Promise. And what that is, is it goes beyond our normal sanitation we've been doing for years, beyond sanitizing just the tools and stations. We have masks, ordinances. We have social distancing in our salons as well. We have the online check-in app, and then we also have the Ready Next Text feature. Learn more at greatclips.com. Well, coming up here on Sissy Lifestyle, we answer the old question, can or bottle? Well, actually, we're just sticking with the can because we're celebrating National Beer Can Appreciation Day, and we're going behind the scenes to Ryan Geist to show you how they can handle, I'm sorry, show you that they can 
handle the truth. I didn't want to mess up that joke. Can't get it? All right. Plus, calling all football fans. The big game is just around the corner. And just because the Bengals aren't playing doesn't mean you can't have a good time. We'll hear from a three-time Super Bowl champ on what you need to do to fully enjoy the game. <laughs> Plus, be sure to check us out on Instagram. We post all kinds of polls and questions and fun behind-the-scenes pictures while we're safely out in the community. So follow us on Instagram at Cincy Lifestyle, and we'll be right back. Well, yesterday was National Beer Can Appreciation Day. And as a city that has a very rich brewing history, we felt the need to celebrate. So Allie went behind the scenes of Rheingeist Brewery to uncover what it takes to can the truth. Yes, take a look. So today we're starting up the can line of 12 packs. It's right behind me. That's the noise you can hear. Um, we're making 12 packs of truth uh, from now until probably 10 p.m. tonight. We're here to speak the truth about what it takes to can the truth. And it all starts with the 7,200 empty raw aluminum cans on each one of these pallets. To begin, the cans are loaded up and organized into a single file line. From there, the cans twist and turn their way down the conveyor belt where they receive a blast of air to ensure that they are completely empty and clean of any dust or debris. Once clean, the next stop is where the magic happens. Freshly brewed beer flows through the cold pipes to this Italian stallion of a machine that has the ability to fill 250 cans of beer per minute at a cool 31 and a half degrees. It's a quick fill and seal process. But if a can misses its fill mark, quality control takes over and bumps it off the line. The cans are then flipped and stamped with an expiration and sometimes even a fun message. From there, it makes its way to packaging, where the boxes are stacked, laser stamped, and filled with ready-to-drink cans. The cases then go through another couple rounds of quality control, and stacked on pallets and wrapped up, ready to go to the warehouse. It's overall a quick and efficient process. And the beer can itself has many desirable benefits compared to its bar buddy, the bottle. There's a lot of benefits to putting beer in cans. Um, first and foremost, safety is a big part. Uh, you can take cans to a pool or to the beach and really not risk the safety aspect of a broken glass. The other aspect is your beer freshness. Uh, the beer stays fresher in a can longer because it doesn't get exposed to UV light. Um, the other benefit could be sustainability. Uh, and actually, because a can is so much lighter, you can ship it from point A to point B and use less fuel. Uh, aluminum cans in America are recycled in general, about 56, 55 percent um, total cans made, whereas bottles are down into the one quarter, 25 percent range. And Rheingeist cans roughly 15 to 16 different types of beer every year, choosing the best of the best from their dozens of flowing taps. Well, the benefit of having a tap room is we get to do a lot of trialing to see what the consumers really like. Um, to do canning is a specific process because it goes so far and there are so many other companies like our key customers um, that are your retailers where you buy beer from. Um, all of those have input into what we put on a can and put onto their shelf. So really it's the best. It, it's taking your roster of everything you got and you're putting the most liked, the best beers and the fan favorites all into a can. So the next time you go to pick up a six pack, pay attention to the cans that catch your eye. Remember, there's always a process and a narrative behind each and every one, with every brewery canning their best beers for you to try. <laughs> I love that. And right now, we're going to welcome Allie back into the conversation. Allie, I, you know what? It just seems like you've done everything, but have you been behind the scenes at a <laughs> beer-making can factory thing, whatever you did? Right. <laughs> yes, I, I will have to admit, this is a big, big perk to this job of being able to see how things are made. You know, I've been to Ryan Geist, been in the tap room, and been in that space, which is incredible, but I've never actually gone down and seen the interworkings of how they brew the beer. And I was, number one, super, super excited and really blown away because, like I said in the piece, they are canning close to 250 cans a minute. So you have um, that that machine, that interworkings of that machine is from Italy. And yeah, that right there that you just saw. So that's kind of like the bread and butter of their line. 
and each station there's roughly six people total on the floor and then you have one or two others who are kind of managing and making sure that the flow is under control and just seeing that process come to life was really really cool and the vastness of it to give you an idea as well when you think of a brand like Rheingeist, yes, they are a craft brewery, but when you stack them up against, you know, the really, really big guys, the Heidelbergs, the Budweisers of the world, they're um, they're they're around the high 30s. And if you go into just small craft breweries in terms of the volume of how much beer they're making, they're in the high 20s in the nation. So they're producing a lot of beer, and they also distribute to eight different states. Um, and they got they have to run five days a week. It was just really, really cool to see the behind the scenes because I'm that you know, person who's always fascinated by how it's how it's made. Um, and I liked the fact that you know you can put little small messages like "Make it a great day" in the bottom of your can. So <laughs> when you go to pick up a Rheingeist beer, look on the bottom because sometimes they'll change the message. You might get a Cincy Lifestyle can. Only a couple of them were made with "Make it a great day." Hey. <laughs> Okay, you know, and I, if, if and anybody does, right, we just want to make sure that they let us know because they should play the lottery on that day. Yes, yeah. Well, unfortunately, the Powerball was already pulled and won, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Allie, right quick, you know, you think about bre brewing beer, you think about the old-fashioned way it was done with the human touch and all that. Not a lot of human touch here, but still some creativity going into it, right? Oh, yeah, 100. And I, I think Rheingeist is a really great example of that, especially when it comes to their branding and marketing. Because when you're talking about a lot of those big breweries, like I said, again, in the Heidelbergs of the world, they're outsourcing a lot of their creative work. When it comes to a company like uh, Rheingeist, they actually have all of their branding internally. So that allows them to come up with these creative can designs um, within a couple months, you know, two or three months rather than eight, nine, ten, maybe sometimes even a year. And you might have seen in the video as well that they actually rebranded their Cidergeist beers. They did a little bit of that experimentation. They received customer feedback that it was six, uh, six ABV to five ABV. So they're able to turn that quickly. So when you go and buy it at Party Source or on the shelves, wherever, you know, those creative um, cans or what jumps out to people, and it's really, really important so they could do that all internally, which kind of sets them apart from other breweries. So go celebrate National Beer Can Day. <laughs> <laughs> right. Allie, as always, great story. Thank you so much for bringing it to us. And, and yes, just a reminder, if you get that can that says make it a great day, let us know. Us Hit us picture. up on social media. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot. Uh, well, no doubt about it, everybody pretty much knows the big game is almost here. And while entertaining may look a little different this year, everyone is still getting ready to celebrate some football with friends and family in person or virtually. Uh, Two-time champion Mark Sclareth is here now to tell us everything we'll need to have on hand to make the day special. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to get right to it. Uh, the first thing, of course, is the TV, because after all, that's what it's all about. So what do you recommend around that? All right, well, you know, when it comes to the television set, experts agree LG OLED is the best, the world champion of TV's beautiful picture. Uh, just uh, unbelievable detail, and it doesn't matter what kind of action you're into, whether it's the big game action, maybe a movie battle action, whatever the case may be, whether it's gaming, uh, they're great for gaming. LG OLED is the best, there's no question about it. Elevate the home game for the big game, go to LG.com, and then it comes down to food. Farm Rich brings the concessions right to your home. Easy snacks and appetizers, loaded potato skins, 100% real cheese and bacon, Idaho potatoes. That's important. I went to the University of Idaho. They're the best potatoes. How about the homestyle meatballs, <laughs> the meatball sliders? Absolutely delicious. Find them in the freezer section of your local grocery store, farmrich.com for more information. Then it's not a party until the pizza is served. DiGiorno croissant crust pizza, buttery flaky croissant layers. I had one the other night, delicious signature sauce, real mozzarella cheese, pepperoni, four cheese, or three meat. You can find those in the freezer section of your local grocery store as well, DiGiorno.com. And then before you do any shopping, check out Slick Deals, social, the leading social media platform for all deals. 12 million unique users. They vet out and vote on the best deals. 12 million of your best friends helping you shop. Uh, I tell you what, you can set parameters in the app. It alerts you when those parameters are hit. Shop everything A to Z at slickdeals.net. And that's how you do the Super Bowl or the big game right. 
Okay, that's really cool. Let's let's get to the game itself and just kind of pick your brain a little bit about what you expect to see and who you think is going to win. Yeah, you know, I, I look at uh, I love two great teams, unbelievable defense for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, unbelievable offense uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs. Hey, listen, I'm an offensive guy, right? And the explosive <laughs> nature of the Kansas City Chiefs, like. Uh, no matter what you do, they score so quickly. They have such big explosive plays that even if you play them exceptionally well, they still find a way to hang 30 on you. So at the end of the day, I, I think I'm going to take the Kansas City Chiefs uh, to win this game, but it should be an epic matchup, an epic battle. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. Uh, quarterback to quarterback, who you think is in the better position? Yeah, well, I mean, what a great matchup. You've got uh, the greatest of all time, Tom Brady, going to his 10th. It's unbelievable to me his 10th world championship and uh, Patrick Mahomes getting back to his second in a row. Both of these guys are incredible. You got the old school goat with the new school goat. It should be uh, <laughs> it should be another just great matchup between the two quarterbacks. All right, Mark. Thanks so much for talking to us today and for you at home. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching our video. If you liked what you saw, hit that subscribe button. You can also check out full episodes of the show you've never seen before or watch your favorites again and again. And as always, make it a great day.